Hey you guys, I hope you all are doing good out there in YouTube world. So today we're going to keep it short and sweet. I've got a couple tech tips to share with you guys. I got a bit of maintenance to do on the big old Honda here. So right on, let's dig into it. So yeah, I had the XR here up on the uh, bike lift and uh, I also got it on a stand so the rear wheels off the ground. And I was pretty surprised to find out the rear wheel bearings are already showing signs of wear. There's a little play in there. The way you guys check that is you just grab with your hand at the top and grab with your hand at the bottom and then just you know gently rock it back and forth and you might even be able to hear this listen anyways if you can't hear it there's actually a good little bit of play in there and that's how you can tell that your uh, bearings are shot so i picked up some skf which is one of the top of the line i got these at my local machine shop so uh Part numbers for those are 60, what is it here? 6203 and 6303RS. So, and we're gonna pop the seals out of those and check the grease. So right on, let's get started. So I got the wheel off the bike here, you guys. I'm not gonna go through every single step of this cause it's pretty straightforward. I'll just outline some of the highlights, but with your axle here, you can see on mine, there's already a bit of surface rust on that. And I grease those axles a lot, so what I do is take a wire brush or emery cloth and just get that axle nice and clean so that it slides out really easy. So I'll show you guys the collar to get these. This video really more pertains to the Honda XR, like the 650L or some of the other XRs. They all have this uh, weird locking ring. I don't know, like most bikes don't have that, but I guess Honda thinks you need one. So anyways, there's a couple ways you can get that off. Uh, most guys just use a punch and a hammer and you know, but you can sometimes make quite a mess doing that. What you can also do is grab one of your old Makita or you know the DeWalt, the grinder, you know for loosening your uh, locking nut on your grinders, and you can just modify it so that it's a little bit wider and it fits those. And then you got a proper tool. Or what you can do is put a couple punches in there, and if you just hold them down like that from the top, and then you put another punch in between or something long, and then you can just actually twist it. If you're holding them, you can just twist it like that. It works pretty slick like that. So yeah, I hope that helps. So I'll give you guys a quick tip here on... Uh, so these wheels are newer too. These are like 2011 wheels or something. My bike is the 93. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it. But uh, for the guys that aren't, I actually scooped some wheels a few years back on uh, eBay. And I think they're 2011s. I can't remember. But anyways, if the bearings have probably never been done on them. So that collar that goes down the center between bearings. Uh, so one tip you guys is what you can do is uh, is not, if you're using the center punch, like the center punch, like I'm doing and driving the bearings out, hit it, hit the punch sideways because what you gotta do is move that collar that's in between over so that you can actually get on to the bearing. Otherwise it just slides through. So use a really heavy duty punch and hit it sideways pretty hard and that'll help move that collar over so that you can get on the lip of the bearing to drive it out and it works pretty slick so you guys can see uh these are honda uses ntn bearings which are actually pretty good bearings from my experience but i'm not entirely sure why they leave one side like there's no uh, seal on one side i'm i would be pretty sure that they probably do that so the bearings will actually wear out you know sooner because then obviously they got to sell more and it's always about making money right so anyways the ntns are definitely shot they look pretty gross and uh they're actually quite a bit of play in those so and i went with skfs because that's probably the best bearing you can buy or one of the best anyways but and they come sealed on both sides obviously which is definitely what you want but even so so you can see here on this one being that it's a much better bearing there's a little bit of grease in there but there's not i don't know if my camera is going to focus on that very well but there's not a ton of grease and i'm a big fan of adding grease so what i do i've got silkaline which is pretty good grease i just pack them up a little bit more you don't have to get carried away but you should definitely add a little bit more than what's in there because you know when you do automotive wheel bearings on your vehicles and stuff there's actually a tool you pack the bearings solid with grease as much as you can get in so a little more grease is definitely not going to hurt things it's definitely gonna and the double-sided seals so now i got that packed a little more with grease i'll put the seal carefully back on you just use a razor blade 
carefully pull it off and then you can uh, add a little more and hopefully you get a lot more life out of your bearings. So here's a couple more tips you guys for installing the bearings. What I'll do, I take a really light finger smear of grease, I'll put it around the bore, like the inside of the hub there where the bearing slides. Because the easier it slides in, the less force you're going to have to put on it. And what I do is take a flat, like a hammer, a ball peen, and then the flat end obviously, and then I just lightly hit around the outside just to get it going kind of square. You don't want to hit the center because that would actually be pushing on the bearings. You only want to hit the outer race. Then once I get it started square, and I know that and you can tell when it's square because it's obviously not crooked when you look at it from the top. Then what I do is I take a metric socket. In this case, it is a 30 millimeter. And when you flip them upside down, they're actually pretty flat. So you'll be pushing mostly on the outer race. It, it's pretty impossible to push on the center. And then just use an old extension on the inside of the socket. And then you have a nice way to pound just on the center so it goes in nice and square. And then, uh, yeah, it goes in nice and smooth that way. Bearing feels good. Easy peasy. And uh, you guys obviously know to I clean up my axle shaft. You know, mine was fairly clean except for the outside a little bit was dirty. And then put a good finger smear of grease on that. And then with your new good bearings and their seals both side of the bearings now, you'll be uh, in good shape. Right on. I should also mention quickly, you guys, I forgot about the seals here. So um, you can obviously order and I probably would recommend replacing them every time you do your bearings, but it's not necessary. Seldom do I ever replace my seals unless, unless they look in really bad shape. But what I do do is clean them up really good and obviously give the lip an inspection. And you can tell how it fits on, on, your, uh, on the axle shaft. There's the... Uh, like the collar, the washer collar thing that, that rides inside the seal like that. And you can slide it over there and you can actually feel if there's play in there and make sure that the lip is touching. And put a little grease on that when you're reassembling because if there's no grease on that rubber, it'll just tear it up because it gets hot. Um, these are more of just a dust, dirt seal. They're not like a full-on seal. Your seal is really in the bearing. That's what keeps everything out. So, yeah. Yeah, at your own discretion, replace them if you feel good. They're super cheap, so it's not really a big deal, but mine are generally in pretty good condition. Yeah, so the bearings went in smoothly, just like I uh, thought they would. It's usually a pretty straightforward job. For retightening that collar there, you guys, I just, um, there's actually punch mark. I got a really tiny punch mark there before you take it off. Just make a really small mark there and there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And then when you're retightening it, just tighten it to that position. And th those just need to be snug or actually really it's just flush with the thing. They don't, you don't need to get like a four foot bar on it and tighten it because you'll never get it undone. I put lots of the grease, uh, lots of grease on the threads as well, just for future. You know, you don't, aluminum on aluminum is not usually a very good, those threads usually mess up pretty easy. So yeah, that's about all there is to it. Nothing but the wheelies left to do now. Here's another quick tip, you guys, which I actually almost just forgot myself. And I do this every every time I have a wheel off is take a paper towel and some dry, uh, some brake clean and just clean off your rotor because working with bearings and grease, you can see, you can actually see grease on there that I probably got from a fingerprint or something by accident. And the average guy would just throw that back in and then you instantly ruin your brake pads. So yeah. Clean your rotors, folks. So there we go, you guys. That's like a thousand percent improvement. It just spins so nice and freely now. And there's uh, zero play in there. Obviously, it actually feels super tight. A loose bearing, you know, when they start to go like that, they go really fast. And even though down there, there's probably only a millimeter of play or like just a tiny bit, a few thousandths of an inch, out at the end of your wheel, that, you know, that's a long distance. That could be, you know, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, you know, it depends how bad your bearing is. So it definitely would affect your bike overall. So having tight bearings is uh, it's fairly important and that wouldn't be very easily fixable if a bearing seizes on the trail. So yeah, right on you guys. I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, let me know if these tech tips help you guys. I've already got a bunch of, probably not many of you guys go to my playlists, but there's uh, one called tech tips and maintenance or something. I can't remember what it's called, but anyways, that's where this video will be. 
there's already a few tips in there and I'm gonna start adding more. So right on, I hope this helps you guys out. If you're new to the channel like that, thumbs up, drop some comments, let me know anything you guys are up to. Right on, bruh. Mm -hmm.